So, let us get started with today's lecture this would be on K L transforms. So, you have seen at least two transformations as part of this uh, course one is the Fourier uh, transforms and uh, the other is the wavelet transforms you have, we have gone into the detail of course you have Z transforms Laplace transforms and many other transforms that you have studied as part of your uh, electrical sciences uh, courses. So, in today's lecture we will see what is common between these transforms and then we will delve uh, into the K L transform Kerr-Hunan Loewe transform. So, if you see the broad structure right many transforms that we are familiar with have been signal independent. This is a very important thing many transforms we are familiar with have been signal independent that is we have a broad or <coughs> generic framework to handle any signal with some properties associated with them example convergence etcetera such that <coughs> the transformation yields a energy compaction B perhaps better analysis or I would say signal properties <coughs> in the transformed domain. So, a good example of energy compaction is wavelets right you look you think about wavelets <coughs> they compact energy and because of some compaction of energy which is happening that is you look at the original band and then you split it into two bands right high pass and low pass and again perhaps within low pass you further decompose into low pass and high pass and so on you, you do this level of decomposition as much as you want <coughs> so that you can have energy in the in the uh, topmost sub band right and that basically I mean you have all the energy concentrated in the region in the sub band region that you want up to the level of resolution that you intend to right and that is basically energy compaction and that leads to automatically to compression and another example that we saw was analyzing the signal properties in the transform domain right. So, for example, if you look at wavelets if I give you a 63 hertz versus perhaps a 65 hertz you would give a certain emphasis to 63 hertz versus 65 hertz though it, it is just 2 hertz of separation they are binned and compartmentalized in different sub bands right there is some sort of uh, unequal <coughs> resolution that we can we can place right and this gives us better analysis it can also give uh, spike suppression etc etc so therefore signal properties can be better analyzed in the transform domain 
by using the frequency domain tools like the Fourier transform etcetera right and we have seen such properties. Now, one of the questions that we have to ask is, is there a framework where the transformation depends upon the data right. So, this is a sort of a philosophical question to ask. So, one is a regular transformation I give you any signal I can compute using Fourier trans that is a signal independent right as long as it satisfies certain notions of convergence right. Uh, example you know it is absolutely integrable or square integrable we have different notions uh, we that we place for the signal right as long as it behaves is, is well behaved within those notions of convergence then we can compute the transformation and then we can analyze further right. Now, what is the main issue with data independent transforms versus data, data dependent transforms right. If you think about data independent transform irrespective of the signal as long as they are satisfying certain properties we can do energy compaction we can compress we can transform it into the equivalent domain figure out what it is required etcetera. But one of the questions that may come is if we were to maximally compress in some way in a signal processing framework compression can also be thought about from an information theoretic framework right there are entropy based compression engines that is out of the scope of the current course. But if you think about from signal processing perspective statistics of the signal should play a role for certain uh, if you were to look at certain properties of the signal in terms of compression etcetera and that is the reason why people conceived data dependent transform transforms such as the principal component analysis which is also the KL transform ok. So, philosophically put <coughs> Is there a transform that can A yield energy compaction? That means you com com you compact the energy into a set of few coefficients that you want, ok. Next is decorrelate data correlations are good if you want to sense intelligence right if you are bringing an intelligent machine if there are correlations or patterns that are correlated you can predict a good example is if you have gone through the course and you try to correlate with the professor's scheme of examinations you can predict what can come. If you cannot correlate then probably you do not you cannot expect what the type of questions can be right. So, this is I think is, a, is an important we need to decorrelate data. We would like to have unitary transformations because it eases out certain properties in terms of simplifications if we can. So, therefore, we bring this notion of unitary uni, unitariness which means if you are given a linear transformation A, A A transposes identity and then this is very important it is data dependent that means statistics of the data must play a role. Okay, if, if you pose these problems I need a transformation and I would make it more specific as a linear transformation because we like to play with linear operators ok. We need a linear transformation that can do all the following 
that is it should be able to do energy compaction, decorrelate data, maintain unitariness and then it should be data dependent. So, if you satisfied all these things uh, then we, we have a transformation right. And fortunately for us Karhi Karhunan and Michel Loeb is a 1948, <coughs> this is 1947, they developed this notion of this is for K. And this is L Karjun and Loeb transforms, okay, named after the inventors. So, we will study the properties of KL transforms. I will study the properties that leads to KL transforms, set up the problem in the framework of optimization that automatically leads us to the transform. So, I think it will be a two step approach uh, in the lecture. So, first we will study some properties and then we know the answer to some extent and then we will pose the right problem and then we will derive the transformation from first principles okay? and it has a lot of applications. PCA is, is a very well known algorithm in machine learning and uh, the applications from search engines to many things you can do with PCA. Okay. <coughs> so, let us start with the following, let us imagine vectors x belonging to R n right they are column vectors in dimensional vectors and they are associated with uh, some probability density function. Okay. So, to be precise they are column vectors. Now, we can compute the covariance of x as follows. So, sigma x is the covariance matrix of x which is expectation of x minus mu x times x minus mu x transpose. Okay, so, this is a matrix right this is an n by 1, this is a 1 by n, you have a n by n. So, this is a covariance matrix. Now, suppose we consider a linear transformation of x by a, let a be some linear transformation of x which means y equals a times x right familiar transformation. So, this implies to take the expectation of y of this is expectation of a times x which is basically this is mu y we will de designate it as mu y which is a times mu x right. We can pull a outside because it is not stochastic expectation over the random vector <coughs> right. When you take expectation you should look at the multi multivariate distributions 
right because it is a vector it has several coordinates and you should look at the multivariate density. Now, sigma y is expectation of y say covariance you have to remove the mean right we have to remove the bias and then we have to compute the expectation y minus mu y times y minus mu y transposed this is what we need to compute. Now, we plug this in y equals a x and we will simplify sigma y is expectation a x minus a times mu x times a x minus a times mu x transposed. <coughs> now, we can pull a outside here expectation x minus mu x times this is a into x minus mu x transpose the whole thing transpose this is a b whole transpose is b transpose times a transpose right and we can write this as x minus mu x transpose times a transpose okay because just a b transpose is b transpose a transpose we apply this property now <coughs> um, i think this brace must be here okay this is a times sigma x times a transpose this is how we would compute the covariance of y. So, we are slowly building building what we need what, what our goal is right. So, we will start with the following goals so, say what we may need 1. we may want y to be decorrelated that is sigma y is a diagonal matrix say lambda. Right, we want to decorrelate the data. That means, if you look at one coordinate, it is not having any co correlations with the other coordinate. I mean, you take the expectation in the in, in the stochastic sense. Now, second second property is we still need energy compaction. that is place energy of the signal non uniformly that is from high to low over the signal signal dimensions. So, what do we mean? Suppose data is such that I have let us say it is a two dimensional data energy in x is 95 percent versus energy in y. Right. If you take the sum energy that has to be 100 percent right. If you look at all the coordinates if you look at the energy in each of the coordinates that should be the overall energy in the system. 
but some of the coordinates may have more energy than the rest and we need some way in which we can sort of have a gradation in the energy over the coordinates right that is sort of the I would say an idea. Now you get these two points right we have these two goals now and we want a linear transformation right you can question that if you proceeded if you proceed with a nonlinear assumption your optimization will be according to what you started off with. But often having a linear constraint helps us ok. So, let us proceed further with this let chi be a unitary transformation matrix for goal 1 we can achieve diagonalization if y minus mu y is linearly related to x minus mu x. Right. We can achieve diagonalization if y minus mu y is linearly related to x minus mu x. So, suppose y minus mu y is some chi inverse x minus mu x. Let us choose chi to comprise of eigenvectors of sigma x. So, in, in, in a way I have given you the answer for this linear transformation it is basically stacking all the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of x right, but we will arrive that this is indeed the right right transformation to choose with the set of optimization constraints that we have ok. So, now if we assume this solution right then sigma x times psi is psi times lambda I call this equation A. Why because of course, we can say sigma x times some say psi i is one such vector right is basically lambda i times psi i this is your eigen eigenvalue equation for i equals 1 2 3 so on n till n right you have n coordinates of n eigen vectors and eigen values and this is the eigen value equation and you stack all these lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 it becomes a diagonal matrix of lambda right lambda is basically diag I would say this lambda is diag lambda 1 lambda 2 dot lambda n ok and then you can compute similarly you stack the corresponding eigenvectors and you can, you can get this. Now, sigma y is psi inverse sigma x times psi. This is not um, too difficult to solve right I mean all you have to write is write it in terms of expectation of y minus mu y times y minus mu y transposed these are vectors right. So, and you use this 
solution that y minus mu y is psi inverse of x minus mu x right you plug this here you will end up with expectation of psi inverse x minus mu x x minus mu x transposed and then you have a psi here right expectation is over this so it is basically psi inverse expectation of x minus mu x x minus mu x transposed times psi right this is just aside some steps. right just follow the math you will land up with this ok. Now, we are able to achieve our goal of forcing sigma y to be lambda by an appropriate transformation A equals psi inverse. Right, we can get a diagonal matrix I mean we can say that if sigma y is going to be lambda we can say the sigma y is going to be lambda if a is chosen to be psi inverse ok. Now, let us so we got a hint already that is you take the data x that is random vectors x pull them up compute their covariance matrix get the eigen decomposition for the covariance matrix stack all the eigenvectors and that forms your linear transformation ok for mapping x to y. And let us investigate the properties of y and we should be able to uh, have decorrelation etcetera etcetera ok. So, let us prove some basic properties associated and then we will carefully delve into the rest. property 1 for any real matrix A. So, it is a real and I also need to bring in the symmetric property real and symmetric matrix A. Eigen vectors or orthogonal if eigenvalues are distinct an interesting property right. I give you a real symmetric matrix and I compute I do the eigen decomposition right and eigen vectors are orthogonal if eigenvalues are distinct and why do we have to bring in this real symmetric matrix what is the connection think about the covariance matrix. Right. Expectation of x1, x2 is the same as x2, x1. So, if you start transposing it, you will see symmetry properties there, unless you are bringing any data dependent notions on the coordinates itself in some way that may not give you that kind of structure that you want, right. Normal conditions, expectation of x1, x2 is the same as expectation of x2, x1. Okay. So, let us prove this property and that is the link where we are building this is more a general notion to state this property, but keep in mind that this matrix A you have to imagine the covariance matrix because that is our goal that is how we are proceeding ok. So, let us start with the proof consider 
the inner product of A x with y for vectors x and y that are Eigen vectors. Now, since A is symmetric A equals A transposed. Okay. Now, inner product of A x with y can be written as A x transpose y, right? The dot product, and this is going to be x transpose A transpose y. Let me call the equation one. <clears throat> now, equation 1 can be seen slightly differently. Right. So, I, I can see this as x, I need to put in these vectors here, x dotted with A transpose y. So, by our definition you transpose this and multiply with this right that is what we did here. We took A x we transposed it and we multiplied it y and we got this right. I can interpret it like this x with A transpose y, but this is symmetric matrix A transpose equals A I can write it as x with A y right. So, A x with y is same as x with A y if A is a symmetric matrix. Okay. So, let us call this equation 2. Let A x equals lambda x and A y is some mu y. Okay. Now, A x with y is basically lambda because A x is lambda x right. I use the property that I can pull the scalar out lambda inner product of x with y. Similarly, I have x with A y this is mu times I pull the A y is basically lambda mu y. So, I pull the mu scalar outside this is again x with y. Right, I have set of equations 3. Now, they both are equal, right. That means, if I take the if I subtract these two equations in set 3, that has to be 0, but lambda is not equal to mu because we assume that they are distinct. So this implies. inner product of x with y has to be 0, which means from geometric sense x is orthogonal to y. So, that is an interesting result, which says that the eigenvectors are orthogonal. And you know what is the deeper implication of this result, because they can form a basis. right and that is why people think about it as Eigen basis from that perspective. Okay. Now, let us check if the energy conservation holds. This is very very important because if you
cannot satisfy the energy conservation property, then there is some loss in the transformation right and we cannot recover. Now, the energy in x is basically the covariance which is given by expectation of x minus mu x transpose times x minus mu x. Now, let us consider energy in y right energy in y is e y which is expectation of y minus mu y transpose times y minus mu y right with y equals psi inverse x where psi inverse is some matrix such that psi inverse equals psi transpose let us say this property is satisfied. Now, E y is expectation of x minus mu x transpose psi inverse transpose psi inverse times x minus mu x and observe this because we wanted to bring in the unitariness right a a transpose is 1. So, your a is like psi inverse and a transpose is like your psi inverse transpose or your a is psi inverse and then you know a transpose is psi inverse transpose because of this is unitary <coughs> this is identity and we have seen this unitariness in filter banks as well right. So, therefore, E y is expectation of x minus mu x transpose times x minus mu x and this is basically E x. And the implication of the statement is energy is conserved. So, this is a very important property that you have to bear in mind when you do these transformations, you do not want to lose the original energy in the signal in the transformation, the energy has to be preserved, but you decide what components you want to throw them off. Right. You decide which of the how much of energy you want to retain and depending upon your threshold you decide what you can do with the representation. So, this picture should be very clear in your mind. Now, with some of these properties that we saw we will motivate towards the derivation of the uh, the transformation. Suppose we want to compact, this is very, very important, compact energy based in the first q components of y. can we construct a transformation that does this. That means, I take some transformation of x and I get this vector y 
and I will observe the energy in y, <coughs> I want to compact it within the first q components of y. Some transformation is happening such that say, say 95, so let us say the dimension is 10, the first 5 components has 95 percent energy and the rest has 5. Say suppose I want to realize such a kind of transformation, can I do that with the given properties. And you have already seen how statistics is playing a role here because we are bringing in the covariance matrices of the data. So, <coughs> therefore, we are bringing data dependent statistics, right. We have to apply other properties and motivate this problem. Now, to be more precise, suppose A is a linear transform such that y equals a x. <coughs> Let us assume a is such that I have a stack of all these vectors where a u is a n by 1 column vector. Okay. Say suppose. Now, let us deal with Hermitians because they can be complex valued. So, therefore, we can think about Hermitians. Now, a Hermitian, so instead of real symmetric matrix, I could you know, re, instead of real, I can bring in perhaps complex. And when I bring in complex, then you have to be careful when you do, do the transposition, you have to take conjugate transpose, right. That is only subtle detail. So, just to be mindful about. So, now a Hermitian is this matrix, which is a naught. conjugate a 1 conjugate dot 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 a n minus 1 conjugate. Okay. Now, to consider energy in the first q components of y. Let us null out k greater than or equal to q components, I would say greater than q, because you want to retain the first q and then anything post q you want to null out components in A and A Hermitian. Okay. Now, let us form A q by retaining the first q components and this is A naught A 1 dot 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 A q minus 1 0 0 0. transposed and a q Hermitian is this matrix which is a naught conjugate a 1 conjugated dot 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 a q minus 1 conjugated null null null. Now, what we need is we need maximize the energy within the first <coughs> q components, which means we want to look at the expectation of x minus mu x Hermitian 
with a q Hermitian a q times x minus mu x subject to the following conditions which is a k conjugate transpose a k is 1 it is ortho normal conditions that is um, the inner product between two eigenvectors are not the same is 0 and when it is the same <coughs> it is normalized to 1 right otherwise I would have, have had if I considered if I did not null everything then I would have just a full a right in this if I would have I would have I would have had a full a here right. Since I am nulling out components k greater than q right then I have I retain the first q components and therefore, this is the energy in the first q components and I want to figure out some transformation that can maximize the energy in the first q components that is maximize E y of q which is given by this quantity subject to these conditions subject to these conditions. Okay. So, now it is not too difficult we can take and formulate these into the Lagrange multiplier framework. let us see how we can do this. Now, J is maximize a k conjugate k equals 0 to q minus 1 of E y of q subject to the condition. this is 0 that is you bring in the condition that a k conjugate transpose a k equals 1 and that is the equation and there is a associated parameter lambda k for the Lagrangian. So, you have all such equations q equations for k equals 0 1 2 3 so on till q minus 1 and you set that within the constraint setup. So, now to simplify let us compute some terms and one of them is a q Hermitian times a q. So, this is basically a naught conjugate a 1 conjugate dot dot a q minus 1 conjugate nulls times a naught transposed a 1 transposed dot 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 a q minus 1 transposed and then everything is null. Okay, and this can be in compactly written in the form of a summation this is k equals 0 to q minus 1 a k conjugate times a k transposed. Okay. The moment you understand how to set this right the rest is routine algebra I mean you just have to get the right setup formulated. Now, 
j equals maximization over all a k conjugates k equals 0 to q minus 1 expectation of x minus mu x Hermitian summation. So, a q Hermitian times a q can be written with the summation k equals 0 to q minus 1 a k conjugate a k transpose times x minus mu x right and then subject this to the following constraints. correct. All I did is this looks more messy than what we started off with, but of course, sometimes doing a lot of messy things will give you good results. You can simplify things carefully. It looks a very ugly equation, but you can simplify this. Now, I will call this equation 1. Let us rearrange 1 a bit. Let us rearrange this, this a little bit. Okay. So, to rearrange this we, we need to consider x minus mu x because the ugly term is 1 which is in this expecta expectation right. I consider x minus mu x Hermitian times a q Hermitian a q times x minus mu x and I said this could be written as summation k equals 0 to q minus 1 x minus mu x times there is a Hermitian here a k conjugate times a k transposed times x minus mu x. Now, this is very important to just recognize the fact that this is a scalar and this is a scalar and you are taking two scalars and you are multiplying them and you are basically adding them. So, therefore, if I can reverse the scalars. So, what I can do is the following I can rewrite this as summation k equals 0 to q minus 1 a k transpose x minus mu x times x minus mu x Hermitian times a k conjugate. That is why routine algebra will not help you. Somewhere you should pause a little bit and think what if you can simplify this further and the simplification will help us because we can write j I would call this as I said this is earlier was equation 1 ok let us call this equation 2. <coughs> Using 2 in 1 we can write j as maximize over all a k conjugates k equals 0 to q minus 1 expectation I have to bring this expectation now summation k equals 0 to q minus 1 I just drop in this directly drop in 2 here a k transposed x minus mu x times x minus mu x Hermitian a k conjugate ok. I want to maximize this subject to these constraints.
it looks still messy, but we can simplify because you can pull this expectation inside. The expectation is a linear operator right that property we will apply. Now, j let us simplify 3. So, by doing so what we land up is now j can be written in the form maximize overall a k conjugates k equals 0 to q minus 1 summation k equals 0 to q minus 1 a k transpose expectation is pulling inside. So, the expectation of x minus mu x Hermitian x minus that is become sigma x covariance matrix times a k conjugate subject to these constraints. This is now easy for us right where sigma x is expectation of x minus mu x times x minus mu x Hermitian. Right? This is straightforward. Now, what we do is I would call this 4. Now, to solve for equation 4, so you want to maximize something subject to this, you set the partial derivative of this cost j with respect to a k conjugate to 0 for all k equals 0 1 dot 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 q minus 1 right. You do this and you apply the properties of the vector differentiation that if you have two vectors y and x d by d x y transpose x is basically y. Now, using this property d j by d a k conjugate equals 0 implies sigma x with a k minus lambda a k equals 0. And this is our eigen is a Reigen value equation. So, all we did is we post the solution to the linear transformation in the framework of optimization subject to certain constraints. This is basically a constraint optimization problem and then we land up with the Eigen value equation. So, before we started off with the optimization we never assumed that they are uh, their eigen their their zero or their their eigen vectors etcetera they satisfy this equation we assumed that they wanted we wanted them to be orthogonal we wanted so that it forms an easy way to represent in the form of a basis so if we we brought in the orthonormality constraints and subjected the the energy to be maximized over the first q components and we did this we land up with the eigen value equation so it is okay to choose eigen vectors of the covariance of x and then work out backwards to get to our transformation. So, I really do not know how Karyunen and Loyev thought about in their original thought process of thinking, thinking through this problem did they have an intuition that they have to look into the Eigen basis or they just 
posed it in an algebraic framework and solved this I do not know how, how they went ahead, but I think uh, remarkably there should have been some clear intuition <laughs> behind going about in a very structured way to solve this problem right. So, this concludes the K L transformation we will now see the application of K L transformation to dimensionality reduction ok. So, we will stop here.